Good afternoon, Senior Councilwoman Goosby. Good week. Greetings. We are live. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. I am Assemblywoman Mikhail Salaj, and I represent the 22nd Assembly District in Nassau County. Um, today, this event is hosted by myself and my Nassau County colleagues in government, Assemblywoman Taylor Darling, Nassau County Minority Leader Kavan Abrams, um, Nassau County Legislator Carrie Salaj, uh, Legislator Sheila Bino, Town of Hempstead Senior Councilwoman Dorothy Gooseby, and Town of North Hempstead Councilwoman Viv Viviana Russell. That's a mouthful, <laughs> it's a lot of names. So I would just like to thank and extend my gratitude also to the Cancer Services Program of Nassau County. Uh, this organization offers services for breast and cervical cancers, regardless of immigration status and healthcare insurance coverage. At the end of the program, you're gonna learn how you can receive your free fit kit to conduct a colon cancer screening through the Cancer Services Program of, of Nassau County or by visiting the Cancer Service Program this Saturday, September 26th in Valley Stream. So I just want to now um, you know, give the floor uh, to Senior Councilwoman Dorothy Guzmi for a couple of words. A couple of words, okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm proud to be here for this important event and thank you, Assemblywoman Solages, for pulling this invitation to put it together and for the invitation. This year, we lost a wonderful young man. His name is Chadwick Bozeman. His death to colon cancer is a reminder that to us, that to us, that all, no one is immune to this deadly form of cancer. In a day and age where celebrities who are usually linked to drugs use and unhealthy lifestyles, it is a severe tragedy to lose this talented actor with this, who had a heart of gold to this illness. Colon cancer is the second most common cause of cancer deaths in men and women in the United States of America. However, African Americans have a higher mortality rate of colon cancer than any other ethnic group to in the United States. That is why colon cancer awareness programs are so important. A 60% of colon 60% of colon cancer deaths can be prevented with screening. It is important to be aware of visible symptoms and to go to regular screening tests to catch, get, catch the illness early. Also, it has been proven that colon cancer can run in a family. If you have a family history of colon cancer, then you definitely make it a part early detection is key. Please take advantage of the Cancer Services Program of Nassau County as they have plenty of resources, resources that save lives. Thank you again, Assemblywoman Solages, for putting this virtual event together in honor of the late Chadwick Baldwin. I urge everyone to pay close attention to the questions and answers as the Colon Cancer Virtual Forum continues. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Councilwoman, and thank you for all that you do as well. It's an honor to be on a virtual Zoom with you. Thank you. And so I would also like to introduce um, another colleague of mine, uh, Councilwoman Viviana Russell, uh, to say uh, words. And not a couple of words. You can, say, you can speak as much as you want to say words. <laughs> thank you, Assemblywoman, Assemblywoman Mikhail Salaj, for hosting this event. Um, so as Senior Councilwoman Goosby mentioned, we lost recently a iconic figure um, in the African-American community um, and that of Chaswick Bozeman. Um, and so I'm happy that you're putting on this program this afternoon so that we can bring awareness to the fact that it's, it's, you know, it's a hard truth in the Black community um, historically, we have a complicated relationship with medical history and for lack of quality care, um, for reasons of mistrust, generationally, our people have suffered through illnesses that could have possibly been prevented um, through early detection. And so I am elated that you're doing this program. I hope that it brings awareness 
to um, colon cancer as well as other cancers. And I'm hoping that through this program, people will reach out for early screening, um, particularly if you have a history of cancers in your family, um, that you will get tested early and that you will pursue every avenue possible and every avenue available to you to prevent this disease from continuing to um, proliferate our communities. So I thank you so very much um, again for hosting this virtual forum um, and to the families of all of those who have lost someone to cancer. Um, my prayers go out to you. We just lost two days ago a giant in the Long Island community and that of Lorraine Acock, who was a very dear friend of mine and to her family and to all those that are connected to her, my condolences and my prayers go out. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, I will now go to Nassau County Legislator, uh, Carrie Salage. Thank you very much, Assemblywoman Miguel Salage. I would like to thank you very much for organizing this virtual town hall regarding colon cancer and all cancers. Uh, God uh, bless everyone's family and everyone currently facing a diagnosis and treatment uh, with cancer. Uh, may Chad Bozeman rest in peace. I would like to also thank uh, the cancer service program of our state and also uh, all the other elected officials who have participated in this conference call, this conference. Um, I would like to encourage everyone local, you know, this is not just a national issue, this is a local issue. And I would like to encourage everyone to please go get tested. You know, once you know better, you do better. And in our community, in the third legislative district in Nassau County, we have a great center where you can get free screening at the Elmont Health 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 Center located at 161 Hempstead Turnpike, uh, right across the street from Belmont Racetrack. Uh, the phone number there is 516-571-8200. Uh, you, I want you to understand that if you go there to get uh, screened and uh, you could take the fit uh, uh, screening home, and if you do screen positive, then you can go to the Nassau University Medical Center to get further uh, uh, testing and screening. All of this again um, is free and if your income allows, uh, it is a, a very minimal cost. And at the health, these health centers, um, you know, immigration status doesn't matter. It is a safe place. Uh, the Almont Health Center has been very important. And as we likely so have been focusing on COVID, uh, we should also focus on these other important issues. It is because of the COVID pandemic, uh, according to health experts and officials, people have not been getting screened for cancers and also uh, heart disease and other issues that are very predominant in our community due to historical cultural reasons. And I'm encouraging everyone to please go get tested. It's very important. Uh, as a young black male in my early 40s, I got tested and although um, they say it's, you know, for young black males in their 40s, as opposed to white males in their 50s, uh, we should get tested in our 40s. Again, due to environmental and historical reasons. And so we have to encourage our loved ones who, you know, are young, that it's not too young to get tested. Um, I got tested in my, in my early 40s and it was quick, uh, efficient, and I'm very happy for that. And every year I get tested. I owe that to my family. Um, and I owe that to myself. You know, if I can get my car oil changed frequently on schedule, then I'm sure I could also um, look into my own health issues. And, and we have to encourage everyone that, that to, to get screened. Uh, and so uh, this is really important that we're doing this together. And, and, you know, Mr. Bozeman was a cultural icon. He created, helped to create a vision of how we are truly the, ancestor, the, the descendants of kings and queens. And that's important, you know, because if we are the descendants of kings and queens, then we shouldn't hold our head down, you know, because then our crown would fall off. <laughs> um, and we have to, you know, 
keep our head up despite all the difficult circumstances that we're facing now in our communities, whether it's COVID, economic issues, political issues, social issues, let's keep our head up and let's continue to educate ourselves because once we know better, we do better. Uh, and so I'm encouraging all young males um, who look like me, who don't look like me to please go out and get tested. Um, I will be, you know, I will get my third test now um, and I, I will do it in a public way and also to encourage others to get tested. Um, I wanna thank the Assemblywoman for putting this together. When I saw the flyer for this event, it was a very beautiful flyer because uh, you know, the majority of all African-American elected officials in Nassau County are on that flyer. And it's very, and I feel really special to be uh, serving our community during this time and with my colleagues who really care about everyone, all lives. Um, but it just so happens that our lives right now are currently in danger. And there's nothing wrong to raise our voice about that concern. And so I would like to again, thank Assemblywoman Miguel Salaj. Uh, you are a truly a great leader in our community. I'm biased, of course, um, but you're doing such a wonderful job. Let's continue to be kind to each other, to help each other um, and, and, and realize that cancer is still a clear and present danger in our community. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you to everyone on this virtual town hall. Uh, thank you, Legislator Salaj. You know, I learned from the best, so, <laughs> so thanks to you. Um, but, you know, I just appreciate the opportunity for all of us to just come together um, because we're all community leaders in our many districts that we serve. And so people trust us and people uh, know our voices. And um, this is something very serious. We know that um, colon cancer, um, uh, people of color have higher incidence of colorectal cancer. And um, we actually have the more aggressive type of cancer. Um, so, you know, for us to be able to prevent this is, is, uh, is the key. And this is a preventable cancer. If it's detected early, we can protect our families. And um, so, you know, just get screened. This is very simple. Just go out, get screened. Don't be afraid. I know many of us are afraid to even look at our bank account, <laughs> you know, but we have to just, you know, uh, really just one of those things, we just gotta get screened. So um, I see Taylor Darling has logged on, Assemblywoman Darling. Yes, I am here. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Okay, so I'm going to lend the floor to you. And then after you, we're going to go to our presentation. <clears throat> okay, wonderful. Guys, thank you so much for having me, Assemblywoman Salages. Thank you so much for being in touch with the issues that we really need to speak about in our community, especially health disparities, especially addressing needs in real time, because we understand that when we are faced with these uh, these calls from our doctor where, you know, something is not right with our health, that time is of the essence. And we want to make sure that we are empowering our communities with the education necessary so that we can take care of each other. And um, I actually wanted to just share a quick story. I had a constituent who was having pains for months, months and months and months. They happened to finally go and get things checked. And unfortunately, they found out that they were diagnosed with um, prostate cancer. And it sometimes seems like a very grim diagnosis, but in really good news, the family really was on top of their support um, and, um, and their care. And I just remember that underlying tone of this situation would have been a lot better if we caught this a lot earlier that early detection is everything. So these are the conversations that we have to have with our family members, especially our men, because sometimes culturally, we don't always rely on modern, we don't rely on medicine all the time. You know, we wanna wait, we don't always wanna to go to the doctor. And unfortunately with our healthcare and our, our insurance issues, people do not always have the resources to A, know where to go and B, be able to afford it. So by the time a lot of us do wind up in front of a doctor, we have passed that early detection phase and we are now in, we have to try to wrap this up real quick phase. And I don't want anyone in our community suffering like that unnecessarily. So um, I think that this is a very important panel. And I think everyone who is involved, all the panelists, these are all leaders within our community who again are in touch with real issues in real time. And um, anything that I can do, any information that we can share, I am definitely a pioneer. I, I wanna be here to do that. 
Thank you so much, Assemblywoman. I appreciate you coming. I know that you're busy, you're doing multiple forums. Um, so I appreciate that you give us an opportunity to say a few words so that you know people in your community know that this is very serious, that we all need to get screened, get tested, and be able to know our status when it comes to colorectal cancer. So thank you so much. So on to our presentation. Um, and right before I introduce our wonderful um, individuals who are providing us with great information, I wanna remind everyone that they can go on Facebook um, and if they have any questions, any concerns, they can type it into the comments and we'll be monitoring those comments and be able and present those to the panelists. So any questions you have, just write it in the chat and we'll answer as best we can. Um, so, uh, let me introduce Sarah uh, Parisi, right, Parisi, yeah, <laughs> I practiced that, <laughs> Director of the Cancer Services Program in Nassau County, and Alejandra uh, Hernandez, who is a coordinator for the Cancer Services Program of Nassau County. Um, I appreciate you taking the time in this evening um, to really um, highlight the, the services that you provide. And um, definitely we're gonna talk about how you can get tested um, in, and get the test kits. So um, I know everyone's interested in getting tested and so you can get actual test kits um, at an event that we're having on Saturday and also at several locations across Nassau County. So that's um, at, gonna be at the end of our presentation. So definitely um, Sarah, I give the floor to you and really thank you to both of you for being here. Um, first, I have to say thank you to everybody. Everybody, I'm just so glad that everybody realizes that this is an issue that early detection for any cancers um, is really, really important. Again, my name is Sarah Parisi. I'm the director of the Cancer Services Program of Long Island. So what does our program do? We offer free cancer screening for uninsured residents of Nassau County. Um, it's not just residents of Nassau County. You just don't need a Nassau County address. You can have a Queens address. You can have a Suffolk address. It doesn't matter. We just want to be able to get you screened and get you taken care of. We have multiple locations around Nassau County. Um, just as um, Legislator Salah just said, we have our place in Elmont that we can definitely do free screenings at. Um, and at any of the health centers around Nassau County, we're able to screen at, do screenings. I'm at Nassau University Medical Center, at Long Island Jewish Hospital, up in Glen Cove. So we really have tried to cover as much of Nassau County as we can without having to travel very far to actually get the screenings done. Um, we screen for cervical, breast, and colorectal cancer as we're speaking about this evening. Um, and if any screenings are comeback positive, any of those diagnostic testing um, is also covered by the program. The program is um, no cost and you don't have to have any immigration status. So please, anybody, if you're worried about um, us sharing information with anybody, if you're worried about um, immigration status, um, that's completely um, confidential. So what I wanted to talk about too is um, my background and sort of why we wanted to do this. I'm a nurse by background. I've been an oncology nurse for about 18 years. Um, so this is very dear um, to my heart is that I feel like the earlier we can detect cancer, the earlier we can um, diagnose it and the better we can cure it. So the, what I'm gonna talk about tonight is colon cancer and I'm just gonna grab my slides. I'm just gonna share my screen and then I'm gonna pull up some information on colon cancer. I'm gonna go through the slides um, one by one. I'm gonna read them. And then if anybody has any questions at the end, we can certainly um, answer any questions that you have. We're gonna talk about how you can get some test kits. We're gonna talk about the event that we're gonna have on Saturday. And then we're gonna talk about how you can get a test kit or screen for any of the other cancers that we screen for at any of our locations at any time. So this is um, getting the facts about colorectal cancer. Um, it's also called colon cancer. You know, we talk about colorectal cancer as being, you know, the same sort of area, but colon cancer and colorectal cancer are the same thing. It is the second leading cause of cancer death among New Yorkers, and it is preventable. This is one of the cancers that is preventable, and we can use screening tests to find the cancers early when the treatment works best. It's better to be diagnosed at an earlier stage so that the treatment can do its job and we can um, you know, move on. 
Um, there's many types of cancers in general with many types of causes. We need to know what causes cancer, but many things can actually affect a person's chance of getting cancer. We talked about race, we talked about age, we talked about family history, um, but people can still get cancer even if they don't have any risk factors. We talk about folks getting cancer as they get older. It's an older person's disease, um, but it's not. And we know that with Chadwick Boseman as well, that he was 43 years old and that, you know, um, he had a diagnosis. So we have to be really careful about saying that it's just, you know, the older you get, the more likely it is that you can have cancer, but really anybody can, and anybody can without certain risk factors. Um, colon cancer itself starts in the colon, um, colon or the rectum, which is part of the digestive tract. And then most cases, 80 to 90% of colon cancer start as non-cancerous polyps. So this is why early detection and early screening is actually really important because what happens is we can find those polyps and we can take them out before they turn into cancer. There's lots of different things that um, precancerous lesions, um, other precancerous things that we can take out and we can actually prevent the colon cancer from happening. This is why we talk about colon cancer can be prevented. Um, they do take many years to become cancer, but like I said, if we take them out you know, early, then they don't have that chance to grow. Um, we're gonna talk about the colon itself and it is part of the digestive tract. Um, it's digested down um, through the intestines and the colon itself is about five to six feet long. And we have a small intestine and a large intestine and really colon cancer can be in any of these areas. Um, after screening is done or part of screening is done, um, a colonoscopy can look at the entire colon and see if there's anything abnormal in there. Um, so what are some risk factors for developing colon cancer? Getting older, like I said, but nine out of 10 colon cancers happen in ages 50 and older. However, we do have that one out of 10 that will be diagnosed at an earlier age. Folks that have a personal or family history of polyps, which is those precancerous lesions, like I said, colon cancer or other bowel diseases, irritable bowel syndrome, um, different things that would keep us at a higher risk. And then we also have lifestyle factors, which can also increase our chance for any cancer, not just colon cancer, being overweight and obese, drinking alcohol, not having enough exercise, using tobacco, eating red and processed meats. We wanna have a nice clean diet. We wanna exercise. We wanna be able to get, you know, as much of decreasing these risk factors as much as possible. So symptoms, when we talk about colon cancer, we talk about symptoms. Now symptoms may appear when the cancer has progressed to a certain point that it's giving us the symptom. However, it may not cause any symptoms whatsoever. This is the importance of regular screening. This is the importance of going to get the FIT test like we're gonna speak about. This is the importance of getting colonoscopies if you're eligible for that. We wouldn't know if these things were there. We wouldn't know if blood was in the stool if not for some of these tests, if you don't see it. Um, we also could experience some pain, some cramps, some change in bowel habits and losing weight for no reason. Again, these are all very, very vague symptoms. So if you have to be an advocate for yourself, if you feel like there's something wrong, if you feel like there's you know, something different about your regular body, you have to you know, talk to your doctor. Okay, so what, how do we screen for colon cancer? We, colon cancer screening means checking the colon and the rectum before the symptoms, like we just talked about in the last slide, those symptoms. We wanna get there before any of those symptoms come. The screening test for colorectal cancer is twofold. One is something called a take-home fit test, which is what we're gonna be able to provide on Saturday um, at the event. 
where you take a little kit home with you, you take a sample of it and you send it to the lab. It's very easy, it's non-invasive, it takes about two minutes to do, um, but there's no exam required um, and there's no really, you know, you're doing it in the privacy of your own home. Um, and then you send it back to the lab. And then if we see blood in that, then we would kind of move on to the next step of diagnostic testing. Um, also too, we can screen with a colonoscopy. So some folks would may not be eligible for a fit test based on um, history, based on um, family history, based on if they already have blood in their stool for some other reason. Um, we can go ahead and go straight to colonoscopy, which is when a doctor uses a camera um, to look up into the intestines to see if there's anything abnormal, which could be some of those polyps that we had talked about before, which could, you know, they can really take away those things and decrease the chance again for those turning into anything um, abnormal. So what is a colonoscopy? Like I said, it is a procedure that's done by a doctor. They use something called a colon, colonoscope to look for the cancer growths called the polyps. Some of them can be removed and they do um, help to prevent the cancer when we remove them. Um, what happens is when they take them out and they use this little hook, like it's there in the picture and they're tested in the pathology department of the center where you're getting the test done um, to see if they're precancerous or not. You would get a test um, on them and you would get a pathology report, which would come back about seven to 10 days later to let you know exactly what that polyp looks like and to let them know what the next step of your care should be. If the results are normal, colonoscopy is actually can done every 10 years. Um, and if they're not normal, if they do see something in there and if they take it to the pathology department, and if they look at it under the microscope and they determine that it's you know, higher risk or lower risk, um, then that will determine the frequency of when further colonoscopies would be done. So really your next screening and your next colonoscopy would be dependent on what the results of this last one were. So again, we have um, these take home fit tests. Now there's many, many different kinds. There's many different brands that are around. You may have seen you know, commercials for them on television. You may have seen them in your doctor's office. Um, you may not even know what they are. So they can look different. Um, some look like they're in a box. Some look like a little card, um, but all have a little um, tool that can be used to take a sample that you put either back in the card or back in the little tube um, to be able to um, send back to the lab to see if blood is found. So who should be screened? Now the slide says all men and women ages 50 to 75. This also takes into account anybody to start screening earlier if they have a higher risk, which is a family or personal history of colon cancer or certain other colon or intestinal conditions. So all men and women ages 50 to 75, um, also then starting earlier if you're high risk. So if one would have a direct first degree relative with a history of colon cancer at 45, you yourself would wanna be starting to be screened 10 years earlier at 35. Now this is just for screening. This is not necessarily for diagnostics where we would want to know and talk about signs and symptoms. This is screening just for non-symptomatic folks um, in general. Um, but if there is those signs and symptoms that we talked about earlier, that would go directly, no matter what age, to um, a colonoscopy. So how can we prevent and lower our risk for colon cancer? Again, it can be prevented by regular screening. We can screen for things that are really early that are coming up, you know, that we see on either the fit test or the colonoscopy. 
like those polyps that we discussed, um, it can be prevented. And we really want to talk about lowering our risk um, by doing different things where we can drink less alcohol, we can get regular exercise, we can stay the healthy weight. Um, and we really don't want to smoke. And if you do, you know, now would be the time to think about quitting. So I want to give a few other take home messages um, through the cancer services program that colon cancer can be prevented. We're talking about this. We've said it many times. Um, all of our um, wonderful elected officials have mentioned this, um, but we can prevent it and we need to prevent it. And all men and women should be screened. Um, women do have a higher rate of screening because men don't want to get screened. And we want to be able to educate the public and educate all you folks out there um, that is, is very important for men to get screened as well. Um, the take home tests are a very easy and effective way to get screened. And we will be able to provide folks with um, tests on Saturday. We'll be able to give everybody the details um, of that event. And it's a very easy way. Again, it's just a take home test. You do it yourself um, in the privacy of your own home and you just mail it right out to the lab. Um, and the cancer services program offers free colon cancer screening for all eligible uninsured New York residents, regardless of immigration status. We would like to reach as many people as possible. Um, uninsured also does not necessarily mean that you have a low income. Um, we've all been affected by COVID. There have been plenty of folks that don't have insurance currently because of a loss in job where we would like to focus on those folks as well. Um, anybody uninsured who does not have health insurance can come to us for free cancer screening. Um, if you do need help, you can contact us. Um, this is the main number of the cancer screening program. However, we are going to let you know that we do have a number at Long Island Jewish Hospital, which is 516-470-4165. And I'm gonna pass along the talk to our wonderful outreach educator, Alejandra Hernandez, who um, on her slide, the number is on there as well as an email, which is csp at northwell.edu. She's just gonna show everybody what the fit kit looks like and sort of you know how easy and how simple it is to get screened. Um, and then she will be at the event on Saturday as long, um, along with myself and our wonderful um, Assemblywoman Salajas and her staff to be able to educate and to be able to provide these kits um, for the folks that are interested. So I will pass it off to Alejandra. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. That was a great presentation. Um, so yes, uh, so as you can see, I have here a fit kit. It's pretty small. It's a small sure. envelope. Do you mind taking down the presentation? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. Hi, everyone again. <laughs> so um, thank you, Sarah, for the nice present, the beautiful presentation. Um, so as she mentioned, these are fit kits. So a lot of people think it might be big. It's actually small. They're small envelopes. And everything is incorporated in the envelope. So when you open it up, it's going to come with a form. This form is actually going to be pre-filled by us. So all the information that needs to go on, you don't have to worry about it. Um, we're going to have them pre-filled. So it's going to be something easier for you. Usually what we uh, recommend the patient to do is to take it in the bathroom and um, just leave it in the bathroom, keep it there because you know sometimes we forget. So if it's in the bathroom and it's visible and you see it, then It'll be easy for you to remember and be like, oh, I have to do my fit kit. Um, it comes with a couple of envelopes. These are the envelopes that you're going to be putting the, um, the form in and the rest of the sample. It comes with a closed envelope. As you can see, it's completely closed. I'm going to open it up just to show you what's inside. So it's completely sealed. 
Inside, it comes with two little um, trash bags. So you don't even have to use yours. These are trash bags uh, that actually stand up. So you could just put it on the floor so you, know, you don't have to get your hands messy. Then it comes with two little brushes. And it's also, they also provide the uh, sample card, which looks like this, it's small. So what you're gonna do is you take one of these uh, brush and you just, when you go to the bathroom, you just lightly brush it. All you want is a little bit of water. You open up this card and then it comes with, I don't know if you could see it, but it comes with one and two little holes. So you take your first brush and then you do it on number one. You discard that in the trash bags that we gave you. And then you take brush number two and you do it on the second. And then you put that also in the trash bag. Then here it has a little sticker. You take that sticker and you seal it. And then like I told you before, you put all of those in that yellow envelope that doesn't need a stamp or anything. Everything is prepaid. And then you mail it out. You just put it in any mailbox, you mail it out. It also, it's easy and convenient because it comes with instructions. And the instructions are really nice because the instructions are actually um, pictures. So, you know, I know some people have problems, you know. So instead of reading it, you know, if you don't have anybody to help you read it, you can actually just look at the pictures. Um, but also the day of the event or any time that we give out this fit kits we have a sample model that we show people you know just to tell them and ease the process for them and if they have any questions well of course we'll answer them and help them out or they can always call us if they have any um, doubts or concerns okay and anybody that's watching well we're excited we hope to see you there on saturday thank you thank you so we have a, a, a general question. And once again, if anyone has any sort of questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments and we'll be able to answer them as best as we can. So the first question we have, and before I start, thank you for that excellent presentation. Uh, really, it was, it was really comprehensive. So thank you both. So let's give a round of applause. <laughs> um, thank you. So the first question we have is, if a person has insurance, but not a primary care doctor, can the program still help with referrals? So if the person has insurance and they don't have a primary care doctor, they can call us um, at the number that we've provided, which is 516-470-4165, and we can get them connected to a primary doctor that takes their insurance and we can help them navigate through um, the process of getting an appointment and um, being part of um, that doctors care. And if someone wanted the kit and they are not able to go on Saturday, um, where, where else can they get um, the kit? So they can actually give us a call as well at the same number and we can um, go through an eligibility checklist for them. Um, if they are eligible for the program, we can actually um, mail them a kit at their house um, we would mail the kit along with a consent to be in the program. Um, once we receive that consent back to our office and um, they would be in, actually enrolled in the program. So there are different ways if they can't come on Saturday um, or if they can't come to any of the locations that we have around Nassau County, we can certainly um, figure out a way to get a kit to them. We don't wanna let anybody go without a kit. And I know, um, Ms. Hernandez, the number is behind you, but uh, I think it's worth repeating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, if you want to re repeat the number. Yeah, so sure. number is here. It's 516-470-4165. Uh, 516-470-4165. They can email us at uh, csp at norfolk.edu. And um, they can also follow us on our Facebook page, which is Cancer Services Program of NASA County. They can always send us a, me a message through there and um, we could get back to them as soon as possible. Um, I know Assemblywoman Taylor Darling has a question as well. And I, I just want to uh, give the floor to her. Ladies, Sarah and Alejandra, thank you so much for that presentation. Um, definitely learned a lot more. 
<laughs> than um than I expected because you know we hear about cancer so much and each cancer kind of presents its own um list of um what's the word its own list of things that you should watch for and how you treat it so I have a question surrounding what was presented in my office how do you have a conversation with someone who is like anxious because they know they've been in pain for a long time. And we know that consistent pain is never the sign of something great going on in your body. How do we have that conversation or how do we train our constituents to have those conversations with their family members? So I would say to your constituents and to everybody's constituents that are here for everybody to be an advocate for themselves. If they mm -hmm. feel like they're having pain, if they feel like something is wrong, if they feel like even, you know, just the weirdest feeling in the world that they just know that this is not their body. They need to know their body. They need to know how their body feels. They need to know what sort of lumps and bumps they have around their body. Um, and then they have to be an advocate for themselves. But you also are wonderful advocates for all of them to be able to say, you know, this person's in pain. What can I do for them? Um, we as a health system and um, me as a nurse, I want to be able to help anybody and everybody um, that's possible. So if any of you that are on this um, panel, you know, feel like you have that constituent that has come to you and said, I need help, I need help, you guys can just come to us and we will be able to navigate them to the right care right. Um, based on whether they have insurance or not, based on what their history is, we will be able to get them um, what they need. Okay, so now that, that definitely helps. But what about, you know, that uncle who refuses to go get help? The right, so that's another That's barrier. the harder part, yeah. That's the much, much harder part, um, especially if somebody is showing symptoms of something, which is even harder to say that, oh, everybody should go get screened because everybody's, you know, well and good and feeling good. Um, but it's that person that doesn't feel well, that's having pain, that refuses to go. So um, again, as you all are wonderful um, advocates for your constituents, I would say to them, you know, talking to those family members and stressing the importance of getting care um, because that person is saying that they're in pain. Um, and for those family members or even you guys as wonderful, um, you know, elected officials as you are to really, you know, even get involved and to say, you know, you're having this pain your family member is trying to help you. Um, you're not wanting to do anything. How can we help? How can yeah. I help as a nurse? How can you guys help? Um, you know, as the elected officials, we really, you know, if something is wrong, we need to try to, um, you know, help. I think a great idea would really be to make it cool to take care of your health, you know, yeah. to, to make it cool because sometimes it really isn't because most people say, I'm going to go to the doctor. He's not going to give me good news if I'm in pain like this, you know? So I think there really needs to be a movement where it's really cool. Like you said, to do get screened, everyone should just get screened and we just make it a much more joyful experience somehow, a much more communal experience. And um, I'll say that during COVID when um, a lot of elected officials, we offer the, uh, the um, cardiac mobile, um, I guess, cardiac mobile trucks to really do screenings on people's hearts a mm -hmm. lot of people really came out and people were bringing their family members there so I think that might be something that we we may consider where we just combine it with things that people actually enjoy and then we come out and we get screened and can figure it out that way definitely definitely I totally agree and I think um, combining the cancer screening even with other things like free free um, flu tests or like um, um, Assemblywoman Salages is doing on Saturday with the food um, yeah. giveaways. Is that really just saying like, this is a good thing and we're gonna give you this sort of extra thing um, that's really important for your health um, together. I love that. Thank you. I would just like to thank Sarah and Alejandra for such a great presentation. I learned so much. And uh, we have to, again, change our culture, okay? We should change our culture to a culture where we uh, get tested at an earlier age. Um, I got tested at 39, 40. I wish I got tested sooner, I see. Um, but thank God everything's okay. But we have to, you know, again, encourage everyone to get tested. And it's unfortunate Chad Bozeman died in the way he did. Um, but perhaps that can serve as a lesson, an important learning lesson for everyone in our community. Everyone who loves a great superhero movie, even a superhero should get tested. And, and we, we, we pray for his family and we pray 
um, again, for anyone facing this, but it's preventable. And we have a center right here in our community and all across Nassau County. I wanna really thank these community health centers. They do such great work. They were there for our community during COVID. We can trust them. They continue to be there and we can trust them. And, and you can go there and get tested without any uh, questions about your immigration status or any other issue. It's, it's, it's done in a dignified way. Uh, I have visited the health center many times. I personally have gotten tested for COVID there. Um, again, uh, we have to really uh, work on encouraging. I wanna thank these strong women in our community, uh, uh, like my sister, who uh, look after the men in our families and who encourage their men to do better. Uh, really, it's, it's a woman's uh, touch that really uh, cares for the whole family. The entire family is dependent upon the woman's care. And I wanna thank well, you know, everyone who is working on this, uh, but, but we really have to continue to advocate, like you said, Sarah, so, you know, I love the way you said it, it's advocate. That's what we're doing right now as a society. We're advocating uh, for ourselves. And so we need to advocate uh, for our health, uh, get screen, you know, get the screening, it's done. And thank you for the presentation as to how to do it. Um, it's very easy. Um, so I encourage many people to share this uh, uh, Facebook uh, video. And again, Sarah and Alejandra, thank you for the great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. I did see another question pop up. Um, the question was, is what recommendations would I give to a patient um, whose doctor says you're too young to be screened, especially with a family history? So a family history, like I said in the talk, really um, kind of brings you up a level without just regular sort of screening that puts you in that high risk category. So if a doctor says you're too young to be screened, I would, um, you know, as that patient, I would even be try to be an advocate for themselves. Um, because if the family history is so strong, and the family history has, you know, first degree or second degree or multiple degree relatives of certain um, diagnoses, um, that really is sort of important. Um, I would also go ahead and say, you know, maybe we can talk to that doctor. Maybe we can have a conversation with them. Um, I know that everyone says like different cancers and different things at different ages. Um, but again, cancer knows no age. Um, cancer knows no race and cancer knows no um, financial status. So we really wanna be able to be there for all those different groups and everybody that, um, you know, sort of needs it. Um, the other two cancers that we screen for are breast cancer, which October is coming up. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. And we're going to be doing a lot of different things in the community. Um, we have different um, events coming up. We have different ways to get screened for breast cancer in the community as well. Um, and then the other cancer we screen for in the program is cervical cancer. So again, breast, cervical, and colon cancer are those cancers that we can prevent with early screening and early detection um, for a better um, treatment outcome. So that's pretty much it. And we don't have any other questions. You answered them so eloquently. Um, is there any other last words or any other words of encouragement you would say to people? For me? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I, again, I would just reiterate um, what we all have said from the beginning of this um, wonderful forum is to the importance of early detection, the importance of screening um, for breast, for cervical, and for colon cancer. Um, colon cancer is what has brought us all together and has what brought the community together after the death of Chadwick Bozeman. Um, and we just have to continue the fight. Um, you know, we're doing this, this is wonderful, and then we're all going to come together again, and we're going to do it again in a couple months in March when it's Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we want to just keep the momentum going. And Alejandra, uh, do you have any other parting words? Um, just, uh, I'd like to invite everybody to come um, on Saturday and join us. Um, like we were saying, you know, we know this is um, a topic that a lot of people feel uncomfortable with, um, and it actually should be something that, you know, it shouldn't be a taboo or anything of judgment anymore. It should just be, you know, this is a life-saving detection, you know, utilize it. Um, 
there's no need to tell anyone that you're doing the test. Nobody needs to know. It's just between you and the doctor and it's a non-invasive test. So we're just trying to find new ways um, to do things, you know, for the comfortability of somebody. And, you know, it's done in, in your house. So come on Saturday, come get a fit kit, join the club and get screened. We also wanted to thank everybody, thank all of you for, um, you know, viewing online. Thank you all, um, you know, Assemblywoman Solages for putting this all together and all of our other elected officials. We really appreciate you guys taking the time um, to be able to talk about this very important topic. So um, just thank you again. Any other co-hosts want to say any departing words or anything else? So I just really wanna um, thank everyone again, the co-host and the Cancer Services Program of Nassau County uh, for providing us with this vital information. If you have any additional questions, you can, you can call them directly at 516-470-4165. And so thank you, you two again, really, I appreciate it. Um, tonight we're saving lives. So, you know, we should feel good about that. Thank you. So the screening event is this Saturday, um, September 26th at 130 South Central Avenue in Valley Stream, New York. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, it's an outdoor tent, so we're gonna do it in a safe, socially distant way. Um, so you can come get your kit and uh, know your status, know, um, you know where you are and, and ensure that you're protecting your family and yourself. Um, also, um, on, for a point of personal privilege, I wanna make sure that everyone uh, fills out the census <laughs> because that's healthcare related. Uh, the, the ending date for the census is September 30th. Um, so that's less than uh, seven days away. And so I encourage everyone just to take 10 minutes and fill out the census. Um, it's really, that's how we're gonna get more funding to Long Island, more funding for healthcare, for education, and for all the essential services that are needed. Um, and so really um, just fill out the census. It's, it's vitally important. I see my cohort, do you wanna say anything about the census? <laughs> I sure do. Hey guys, listen. <laughs> Our communities are under attack right now, okay? There are a lot of things distracting us from the census. We even had the date moved up from October 31st to September 30th. What we choose to do and what we don't choose to do right now will impact us, our communities and our families for the next 10 years, okay? We can't go back and ask for more. And the last thing we need to do, especially after this pandemic, in the middle of this pandemic, it's not over is lose resources. We cannot lose representation. We cannot lose our voices and we cannot lose funding, okay? A lot of these programs we're able to bring to you, a lot of these screening programs through funding, funding from programs. So we lose funding, people lose jobs. We lose resources. We lose people who actually care about people in our community. So please take 10 minutes, then call five people and make sure they took 10 minutes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for mentioning that, Assemblywoman Solages. Yes, I just want to piggyback on that. Please fill out your census. It's very important. Uh, we will not would not be able to have the health center uh, and other facilities if uh, people do not properly fill out their census. Uh, it, that information is used to determine how much federal funding our communities receive. It's very important. Please don't forget. Please encourage ten other people to fill out their census. Uh, September 30th is a deadline. Just do it now, get it over with. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of our community. Our community, uh, uh, they're, they're doing very well, but we just need to push it more. Um, so I think again, that's, let's focus on encouraging uh, our community to come out to fill out the census. Uh, thank you. Definitely um, our civic duty, filling out the census, getting screening, going out and voting, all the things that we need to do. So we encourage everyone to really be a good citizen, fill out the census and, and participate in government. Um, but that ends our program. I looked, there were no more questions, but if you do have a question, you can call the cancer service program directly, or you can call my office um, as well um, at 516-599-2972, and we can help guide you um, for any information or anything else you need. But um, once again, thank you, you two. We appreciate it. Thank you to our co-hosts. And I want everyone to stay safe, 
continue wearing your mask, washing your hands, keeping that hand hygiene, getting screenings, cancer, colorectal, everything that you can get. You should get every sort of screening and um, exercise and be healthy and just have a good night. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Take care. Good night. Thank you.